Okay, so you're looking to buy the POCO F3 and you're wondering what kind of camera performance you can expect from the phone. You're watching The Lazy Reviewer and this is the camera review of the POCO F3. Firstly, let's talk about camera specs. On the back, we have a 48 megapixel main camera and an 8 megapixel ultra wide. Along that, we have a 5 megapixel macro camera and on the front, we only have a 20 megapixel main camera on a small hole punch. The back camera only supports up to 4K 30fps and uh, 960fps at 1080p. The selfie camera only supports up to 1080-30fps, which is pretty bad. Okay, so now let's take a look at the camera app. Going into the camera app, we're greeted by this photo tab. On the left, we have video and pro mode. And on the right, we have portrait and a more options tab with night mode, 48 megapixel mode, panorama, slow motion movie effects, long exposure and time lapse. And on the top, we have options like flash, HDR, AI. We have a filters option and Google lens and our settings. Here we have options for movie frame, grid lines, macro, tilt shift, and time burst. Along with that, we have a aspect ratio setting along with a timer setting. Okay, now let's take a bit of picture samples and we'll take a look at them later. Firstly, in the normal mode in 1x zoom. Now, ultra wide at 0 0.6 times and 2x zoom, it's pretty in there. Now let's take a portrait mode picture. Okay, now let's take a couple of pictures from the front camera. In normal mode, you can see we have purification turned all the way off and there are no filters. Going into portrait mode. Okay, now let's take a look at all of the pictures. Okay, now let's take a look at all of the pictures we've taken so far. Starting off with the picture from the main camera. We have a lot of detail in the picture as you can see here, even when we're zooming in all the way. You can even see some details in all the reflections. Moving on to the ultra wide, there's not a lot of detail and the colors are pretty weird, not original fit, not the original colors. Moving into 2x, the detail is pretty good. It's probably digital zoom, so it's just cropping into the picture. Moving on to the portrait mode, you can see that the edge detection is not great on this plant, but overall in other testing, it comes out pretty good. This is pretty weird and it takes all of the detail out of the bowl. Moving on to the pictures from the front camera, you can see there's a lot of detail and the skin tone color is pretty realistic. Pretty good picture overall, a lot of detail, good colors. Even the portrait mode works amazing for the front camera. Here you can see in the wide angle again, there's not a lot of detail and the color is pretty oversaturated. This is the 64 mega 48 megapixel mode and you can see that there is a lot of detail when zoomed in. We can zoom, zoom in all the way and it looks pretty good. Okay, now that we've taken a couple of pictures indoors, let's go outside and take a look at what the camera performs outside. Now that we've taken a lot of camera samples outdoors and indoors, Let's take a look at the ones that the camera took outdoors. Firstly, here's a video taken outside my house. It's pretty good. The stabilization is not great, but if you keep a steady hand, it looks pretty good. 
The colors are pretty good and realistic, so there's no complaints there. I wish there was a little bit more stabilization, but I guess this works fine as well. Next we have a picture of the snail from the macro camera. You can see there's a lot of detail. The colors are not exactly great, but I guess they work. Next we have some pictures taken at night with extremely low light. There was barely any light around this bike and you can see the picture turned out pretty good. The colors are not exactly natural and the, and the way they were, but it still looks pretty good. This is a picture from the main camera taken in broad daylight. You can see there's a lot of detail and everything looks pretty sharp and clear. Next we have the slow motion taken from this phone and you can see moving to the slow part. It looks good, really, really good. Next we have picture from the main camera taken outside and the weather is pretty cloudy so there's not a lot of light but it is enough for this phone to take good pictures. You can see there's a lot of detail everywhere, zooming in all the way. Colors are pretty good as well. This is from the wide angle. The colors are pretty oversaturated but overall the picture looks pretty good. This is from the 2x and the picture is slightly overexposed but overall it still looks pretty good. The portrait mode however is a really iffy. It works sometimes and it doesn't sometimes. The times it does work it is pretty good. You can see that the edge detection is good when it does work but when it doesn't work it's really bad. From the front camera this picture is taken from the normal mode. You can see there's no beautification and everything looks good great quality. Here in portrait mode you can see pretty good edge detection on the front camera as well. These pictures are taken pretty decent light so they are pretty good. I would not expect the same results in low light but I guess the camera does perform in good lighting so that's good enough. Taking a look at the video from the front camera You can see the camera does capture a lot of detail and it is pretty clear. The stabilization is again pretty bad but I guess the video overall looks pretty good. And the time lapse captured from this phone was taking a little bit of time to render but after it did it worked pretty good. The video is uh, pretty stable in the time lapse that's because of good handiwork but I guess this is good. The camera on the POCO F3 is average, it's not that great, it's not that bad, it is exactly what you would expect from a phone this price, it does what you would expect and doesn't do anything above that. The portrait mode is pretty iffy and overall the 48 megapixel is kind of down there in the lower budget phone. There are a lot of better camera phones like the Mi 10T and some other phones from Samsung, but overall this is pretty good for the price I mean. Well that's all we have for you today, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more to the point unboxings, reviews and